It's nice to see everybody. It's nice to see you too, Lion. All right. Have a seat. Cross the shins. Flex your feet. Not just the toes, but the whole length of the foot. Press your hands and your thighs. Lift the spine up. Drop the shoulders. Take a nice deep breath in. Raise a little higher. Let your spine lift with it. Draw your back ribs towards each other, your side rib forward, your front rib up, chin lifted and your eyes closed. Let's take a couple minutes. Feel your body. Like I've said before, we all come to yoga for different reasons. We all come looking for many different things. Each time we get on the yoga mat is a chance to create those things. If we're cognitive, if we're aware of our work, not just intellectually knowing what it does, but we're aware of our mental, emotional, physical process each moment we're in it. That it's the layering of the physical the mental and the sheath of breath together that makes a whole person. So regardless if you're here for just flexibility and health or you're here because you like the challenge, be aware of how it challenges your breath and your physical body and your mental state. Or if you're here to learn about the deeper philosophy of self, you have to see how the poses encourage all those things. Whatever you're here for, yoga gives you a chance to see it. Regardless of what the teacher offers, regardless of what you're coming in with, if you're aware of what's going on in and with you, you always have the chance to create what you want. And owning that power, owning that sense of ability is a hard thing to practice in the normal life. So many things that would ask us to give our ability to make decisions up to them, put everything on automatic, reoccurring, renewing, but never changing. When I think most of us know that that's not our life. Our life is ever changing and never automatic. Bring the palms together at the chest, thumbs touching the sternum. Roll them shortly three times and then begin. Om. Flex your feet. Om. Chest up. Bow your head for a moment. Salute the essence of yoga inside yourself. Bring your hands into the lap. Let your head rise. And your eyes open. So nice to see everybody. Welcome. Great. Grab a yoga strap. Lay on your back. Work the hips, hamstrings a little bit. So when you lay down, hook, uh, stretch your left leg out and hook the strap around your right foot around the five joints called the metatarsal. So not the toes themselves, nor is it the arch, but those large five joints that hold the toe to the foot of the right foot. Stretch your leg straight up. When you stretch your leg up, Instead of flexing the foot back towards your face, point the foot against the strap a little bit, but then pull the toes back. So it's the point of the foot, but the flexion of the toes, or Barbie foot as it's been called. 
even if you have to lower your leg a little bit, so you stretch the back side of the leg and the hamstring long, mm -hmm. then pull on it gently to engage the stretch. It's better to have the leg low and straight and then pull it into the stretch than it is to pull the leg deeply to the face, bend, and then try to force the leg out against it. That's a different pose. That's going to create a different kind of uh, body effect. So stoop to Patagonistasana, where you just start to work whole hip back. We did some similar parts of this uh, a week or two ago. We're going to continue it now and see how it helps into some backward bends and other necessary body movements that are uncommon in our daily life. So for most of us, often we start this stretching our, uh, uh, keeping our arms close to our chest, pulling on the strap. And if you can, take your hands a little higher up the strap and bend your elbows out wide to begin to open up the shoulder and back. So instead of tucking your elbows and pulling down, bend your elbows wide so your shoulder blades and upper back have to move. So you get some little bit of extra work on the pull on the leg but not by the shoulder neck, but the lateral, uh, the back muscles and the lateral body. Just kind of breathe into the stretch. Be here for a moment. And if you want more work, if you feel like this is too simple, you're in a stretch, you can always press your left leg away from you, stretching your left thigh away from the hip, stretch the calf away from the thigh and then push the thigh bone down into the floor. No. Take the strap in your left hand. Take the right leg across towards the left side, about 10 inches or so, so you start to feel the hip stretch, keeping your right hip on the floor. Pull that leg over a little, and then try your best to pin the right hip down. So as Mr. Engar said, we have to not lean our whole body into the stretch, but stretch the limb or the part away from the center line. So as you take the right leg across, you try to keep the point of the body that can resist it, resisting it. So the right hip pulls down on its own strength, the left thigh pulls down, the right leg stretches across. You don't want to kind of just half twist the hip. Go ahead, bring your leg up. Take your right leg out to the right. When you stretch your right leg out to the right, hold the strap with the right hand, press the left thigh down, stretch the left leg away from you. And again, same action. Don't just let your right leg fall to the floor being passive. Extend your right leg out against the strap. The right thigh stretches away from the right hip. Create extension in these limbs just as you would have to do if you were doing the standing version. Supine action of the pose gives it some more level of passive, uh, passiveness. But that does not mean we take this opportunity just to totally relax. The more we keep ourselves alert, focused, the more we pick up about this pose, the more we eventually find different little ways to adjust it, to work with it in our individual uh, body structure, not just the form that 
you know, we initially get into. Bring your leg up. Go ahead, switch your legs. Stretch the right leg out, left leg up. Yeah, there we go. We stretch the left leg up into the air again, point the foot, flex the toes. Even if you have to lower the leg a little bit to feel the thigh muscle flex to stretch the leg long and then bend the elbows wide to pull it into a deeper uh, stretch of the leg, do so. Again, just kind of breathe into it. Be aware of the things that want to come up to distract you from whatever, right? Poses that get really, uh, quote unquote, simple. Not that any pose does, but if you allow it to become simple for yourself, it's easy to let the mind wander. Judgments come into play. Remember, point of the, the, the practice is not to gain enlightenment so you could judge others, it's to Become aware and see yourself. Take the leg across, about 10 inches or so. Remember, as you take the left leg across, the body itself stays grounded. And when you pull the leg across, it creates that stretch and that work in the left hip, maybe the left hamstring. All that type. Bring your leg up, take your left leg out to the left. Left hand holding the strap, please. Remember when you stretch the leg out, don't just let it be passive, but flex the thigh, not just to push the knee, but extend from the thigh bone to the calf, calf to the heel to the toes. So it's not just about the back side of the leg being awake. It's the top side of the leg or the thigh toward shin bone that is also engaged. The more layers of yourself that you bring into pose, not with force, but by backing off some parts, even to help engage others, is always going to make a more even balanced awareness of the body. Even though it is easy to say, well, some poses only stretch this or do that. There's stuff happening in your right thigh, your right hip, even into your back and shoulders, if we're aware. So again, no matter what you're here for, be willing to see at least you know, the breath layer, the physical layer, the mental layer. Because you can't work one without all the others. There's even seven total layers, but those are really the first three. Right Bring your leg up. Bend your left knee, take your foot out of the strap, stretch your left leg out. Draw your right knee to your chest, taking your right arm onto the inside of the leg and with your right hand grabbing the arch of your right foot. Nice. Turn the sole of the foot up to the ceiling, so the shin 
vertical. And then before you start pulling down, some of you know what happens next, I know. Work your left thigh more. Can you place your left hand on top of your left thigh just as a reminder to push that muscle down from that muscle you're touching? Because there's a difference when you work that leg versus gripping your glute to try and feel like you're pressing harder into the floor or flexing the upper thigh to depress it to the floor. You cannot do the first one and succeed at the second. The glute on the back side of the leg must relax the left leg and the legs stretch away from you. Like you're not just trying to depress it, but you're stretching it long so it drops. And then with your right foot up in the air, then pull your right knee down with your right hand to begin to stretch opposite of the left leg action. In reality, the left leg is the more important part of the pose than how deep you pull that right knee. I can pull my right knee all the way down to the floor, but my left hip pops up, my left thigh lifts, and I lose a lot of the actual uh, 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 spacing action of the pose where two parts move opposite of the other. So instead of you know, going, uh, going ham on that right leg, stretch your left thigh out better, depress your left thigh down, and then let the right leg be the thing you use to create a little bit of stretch, but only with the stability and your focus on the other side. It's easy to think in the practice that the moving part is the important part of the pose. I think that that uh, comes from a good eagerness that I share. But I also think it, we don't get the lesson that where we're working from is just as important as where we want to go. So whatever you got going on in your left leg, work that, then work your right. Go ahead, take your right leg down, pull the left leg up. Left hand grabs the arch of the left foot, turn the shin vertical. And before you start pulling, work your right side first. See what you can do about relaxing that right glute and think about stretching the thigh away from it, stretching it longer, not just the leg, but the buttock itself. So the top muscles where your right hand should be laying on top of your right thigh are just a reminder, that's the part to work from. You can even press down with your hand a little bit if you like, just to give it a little bit of extra go. But then once you feel like your right leg's there, you got like some action there. Remind yourself that foundation is more important than the movement. Slightly draw down on that left foot, just not at the cost of the other side. Let the left leg go. Stretch your left leg long, stretch the back side of the buttock, glute, depress the thigh down, and then pull the right knee to the chest again. Once you pull the right knee to the chest, uh, take your left hand and grab your right heel. Pull your left heel as close as you can or your right heel as close as you can towards your left thigh near the hip joint, if you can. If it can't reach the hip, that's okay. Anywhere on your left thigh is, is moving it in that direction. You're encouraging it that way. But also, just as you pull that foot across and down towards the hip, check in with your left leg again. Work the back side. Let the back side of the leg go long. Let the top side of the leg, where the heel is moving towards, to press down. And then, holding your left foot or excuse me, your right foot near your left hip, stretch your right knee away from you, just trying to point it the same direction as your left foot is. So your quad stretches away from your body 
and the thigh unfolds away from the hip. You can move your hold from the left or from the right heel to the top of the right foot with your hand if you like. So once you stretch that right thigh away from you, pull your right heel down to your left hip, Brian. Bring your right heel to your hip, all the way down. Now stretch your right knee towards me. There you go, bud. Hold on to the foot. Everyone should still be holding on to that foot and encouraging that foot towards the hip a little bit. As you flex the right thigh and engage the quad to stretch the knee away from the hip. We're doing a variation of Vrkasi. Yeah, Supta Vrkasana kind of. Actually, this is its own particular thing. It's not Vrkasana. Supta Vrkasana is actually quite nice. This is the truth. Pick your right knee back up towards the sky. Stretch your right leg out. Don't worry, we're going to do it a couple times. Bend your left knee to your chest. Work your right leg. Check in how much your right hip and thigh just popped up because you pulled your left leg up. Relax the right glute, stretch the back side of the right leg. Take your right hand and grab your left foot. Pull the right foot towards your right hip. Once it reaches the hip at whatever degree, flex the left thigh, stretch the knee up away from the hip and then away from the whole body towards the toes, towards the uh, right foot. So it's a thigh lifting, thigh extending. And it's an active pose. Once you get there, you just don't lay the foot down and chill. The arm holds the foot. And to a degree, that left thigh is trying to stretch away from the left hip. And the foot may feel like it wants to pull against the hand. That's OK. That moves the inner knee joint, the groin muscle. Yeah, both, both legs are moving away from the body. Stay active in it, even though you're laying down, and traditionally this is where we would take a, take a rest. Can you bring your focus back into those three parts of yourself? Where's my breath? What's going on in my body? What's going on in my mental state? And if those three things aren't in line with your yoga practice, then what are you practicing? No reason to beat yourself up if you catch yourself not practicing on the mat. But you know, check back in with yourself. Offer your, you know, offer to get back in the work. Bring your knee up. Stretch your left leg out. Grab your right. Uh, pull your right knee to your chest again as you extend the left leg. Left hand grabs right foot. Pull the foot towards the hip. Stretch both legs long, stretch the right knee, laying the right knee down towards the floor, but also flexing the thigh and stretching it away from the hip joint. Can you relax the right glute and let the right thigh do the greater work? It is challenging to do because the tendency from this leg position is to flex the right glute to try and pull the knee down that ultimately will make this very hard. The work is to try and let those muscles on the back relax so you can flex the right thigh and even push the foot against the hand a little bit yeah. to create a little more work on the top side of the body. Feel that, huh? More the ankles. Not a right here. Stretch your pinky toe side away. Bring the leg up, switch sheet. Left, right leg long, stretch the back side of the leg, depress with the top leg, pull the left knee to the chest. Right hand grabs left foot, pull it across. Flex the thigh, extend it out.
We've been practicing seated poses a lot over the last few months, partially because doing supine versions of those seated poses are much more intense on the back. You're doing like a third of a lotus pose here. And for some of us, this is a lot of ankle, knee, hip work that, and back work that we weren't getting from seated upright. A lot of different reasons for this, including how the, the back muscles tend to tighten over time, or the glutes tend to want to do the majority of the work. So even after you do it seated a lot, then you have to kind of almost start over in a certain way and do a bunch of them from supine to really start to find uh, uh, muscle movements and actions that allow freedom of movement for all this stuff. That's what the second time on the left. Stretch your left leg out, bend the right knee to the chest. One more time on the right and left. Pull the right knee in, left hand grabs right heel or right foot, excuse me. Pull the right foot towards the left thigh, work your left leg first, and then stretch the right thigh down and away from you. This is a really good pose just to do kind of consistently multiple times. It really can change a lot of the psoas, hip muscle uh, connection down into your knees, especially if you ever have knee pain uh, in certain backward bends or even deep knee bends, this really does help challenge a lot of that. On your right hand. Mm -hmm. Okay, it wasn't there at first, was it? Wasn't there at the start, was it? Well, we showed up. Switch legs. Right leg out. Stretch, relax, and lengthen the back side of the right leg. Make the top of the leg to press it down. Pull the left knee up. Right hand grabs left foot. Foot to right thigh. Flex the thigh. Extend it away from you. Push the foot against the hand a little bit. So it's not just about the muscle dropping and then overworking uh, small muscle tissue. Bring the leg up, set the foot to the floor. I would grab a yoga block if you have one. If you do not have one, it's okay to use anything to add a little bit of height to the hips, books, saucepans, uh, items like that. You know, take a block. I've used a saucepan in yoga class plenty of times. It's fine, works great. Uh, bend both knees, play, lift your hips, place the block uh, on edge. Remember, edge is not flat nor tall, it's the middle height, like so. Under your sacral plate, across your sacral plate. All right, bend the elbows and press your elbows down into the floor fairly hard so you can puff your chest up and then draw your shoulder blades under you and together more, and then stretch the front top of your shoulders down to the floor, like you're stretching the shoulders away from the collarbones, the collarbones away from the chest. So there's an active stretch to the front side of the body and not just the back side of the body flexing. You're moving the front side into length. And then you can relax the arms if you can hold it. So some variation is touch your bondage. This will not be the only backward bend we do, but it is the one we're gonna to use to start prepping the quads and legs. Bring your thighs together, feet together, knees together if you can. 
And then slide your right foot under your left thigh as far as you can towards the left side of your mat without pain. You get a foot cramp, hip cramp, I'm happy for you. And let your right knee fall towards the floor. Just let it drop. So once it's gone down, notice how your left hip came up. The same action that, need, that we did in all the other poses is applied here. Lift your right knee up about five, six inches so you feel your left hip coming into the block again. Pin your left hip down from your left thigh, your left abdominal wall actually flexes, and then stretch your right thigh down and away from you. So it's not just pressing to the floor, but you're trying to lengthen the thigh bone away from the left hip. So those two parts work opposite. This pose can do really wonderful things for a lot of the low back tension, stuff like that, if we don't just let the limb hang, but we stabilize the other side, the opposite side being left in this case, and then extend the right thigh away from you. None of the backward bends, the really you know, intense ones that work our back are passive. So the right foot should be behind the left foot. Push your right foot against the left heel. Like you're trying to push the left foot away from you. And the more you do that, the more you're going to feel the right thigh flex and the more work you're going to get out of it. You can even push the right foot into the left foot and down into the floor to work the top and inner part of the thigh. Tristan agrees. Go ahead, take your right foot out, plant your right foot to the floor, take your left leg under. Let the left thigh come down a little bit, pause. Right hip pins down by flexing your right thigh. So try not to grip your right glute. Flex your right quad, push your foot into the floor to help. Right abdominal wall helps hold the hip in place and then stretch the left thigh away from you and down. And then even push the left foot into the right foot. Take the left foot out, place it to the floor. Slide your right foot under one more time. Slide your right foot under. Slide the foot a little bit across towards the left side a little further, just so you pull the thigh more in line with your hip. Push the foot down into the floor to engage it. Keep your left hip pinned from that abdominal wall and then pull your left knee towards your chest on its own string. Once you've pulled the left thigh as deep as you can on its own string, take your left foot onto your right thigh and just let the weight of your left foot press onto your right thigh. Push your right foot into the floor more so you're keeping your right thigh engaged so it's not going on duly into the hip joint or knee. And then you can let your left knee stretch away from you also and fall downwards. Let your left knee go down higher towards your, towards your right foot. Yeah. So here we can either be passive and let all the muscles of the groin grip and cause a lot of stretch, but not opening, right? Actively push through your right foot. So you'll feel your, let, right, you'll feel your thighs lift a little bit, but it takes some of the pressure off of the groin and pelvis. 
it may be intense, but now the muscles are not just working the smallest stuff. You're working a larger area of muscle. You're trying to integrate more of your body parts into the pose. Okay. Keep going, another few seconds. Go ahead, take both feet flat to the floor. Slide your left foot under your right thigh when you're ready. Slide your left foot just a little farther across to the right. So your left thigh doesn't have to be perfectly in line with your hip, but you know, it's not hanging way off to the side. Push your left foot down into the floor. Feel the activation of that leg by doing that. It's the same principle that we've worked on for months on these classes. Pull your right knee to your chest as deep as you can. That is to lift the buttock, both sides to kind of get you out of hanging in the groin. Take your right foot across to the left thigh. Keep pushing that left foot down. Don't just let everything go passive. And then let your right thigh fall down towards the floor, stretching away from your body. Getting a, a backward bend form that is very different than you know, the average day-to-day -day posture. Place both feet flat to the floor. Cross your right thigh over your left thigh. This is not ankle just over knee, but drape the whole leg across the top, like go move. All the way over, Ryan, cross the thigh all the way over. There you go. Squeeze your right foot towards your left calf and then pick up both or pick your knees up above your hip. Squeeze your right calf, right foot into your left thigh as hard as you can. And then take both legs into a small twist to the left, about 10 inches, five, five to 10 inches. So you feel like you're rolling onto the left side of your sacral plate on that block. And you'll feel a tight muscle in there. It's your piriformis. You find it, congratulations. Pick your feet up, Meshuba. Pick your knees up. Oh, Shuba, correct your block under your sacral plate. It's tilted, dear. You want it to be level. There you go. Now pick your knees up. I didn't want you to fall. Pick both feet up off the floor, dear. There you go. Better. Again, just even in intensity, what's that intensity creating in? What's that passiveness or intensity creating in your breath, your mental state, your physical state? And if one is too intense, you back off. The three are to be brought into a line together. Bring your feet to the floor, switch your legs. Stretch, take your left thigh over your right. Pick both feet up off the floor so your both knees are above your hips. And then tilt across to the right a few inches. But you're squeezing the left foot towards the right calf. The legs are not passive. Few seconds. We've done a lot of seated twisting. 
And now this is a seated a pose, you know, we do go move from seated position, but the little bit of twist here is very different where we twist the spine. Now we're deep into the weight of the hips. Untwist, bring both feet to the floor. Last one from the block. Bring your left foot closer to the block and your body enough to grab the top of your left foot with your left hand. Turn the, turn the toes so the toenails are touching the floor and then draw the left foot alongside the block as best you can. Even if it's just your toenails slip under and you get a terrible foot cramp right out the gate. You start to move the leg, you create the extension of the thigh from that action. Flex the left thigh and don't push the knee down, but stretch the left thigh away from the hip. Elongate it at least towards the end of your mat, even if you're up on your tippy toes, because that's all your calf and quad can take. All right, exhale, take the leg out, switch sides. Right foot, pull it under. Two more seconds. Take the right leg out. With both feet planted to the floor, lift your hips a few inches. Take the block out, slowly lay your spine down for a moment. Just rest there on your back with your knees bent, your feet flat. Here for a few seconds. Use the points between poses, no matter how long or short, to check in, see what's happened, see the after effect to the three layers of yourself. And are you, is your practice that you're creating inside the work and the asanas giving you what you need? And even if not, Now you know, you know that this pose is moving you this way in one part and a different way in other parts. It's about finding the poses that bring you in your alignment and that your needs are right now. And that takes a lot of time and practice. You use these poses like tools to create the space in yourself that you need. Roll to your right, sit on up. If you, if you do not practice backward bends very often, if you know you have tight quads in the impact, you're going to need blocks or a chair nearby for Ustranasana or camel pose. Good. So I know I've taught this before, some of you have done it before, but I'm going to have Tristan go through it because there's a couple different things about it that I want to kind of touch on that can be very useful for especially the sacral plate and lower back. Come on, can you move Get that way? So Tristan, I'm going to try and go through this quickly so you're not all just watching the screen. But we're here to learn in class, not just fall blindly. When you do Ustranasana, it's not leaning back from the knee. So your knees should not fall back like that. 
Your thighs want to try and stay stacked as possible. So for a lot of us, a good part of the practice is to take your hands onto your sacral plate. You take the pinky side of the hands, you bring the pinky side of the hand together and place the palms on the SI joint, which is right at the below your spine, right about the center of your pelvis. Here's why. A couple interesting things that come in backward bends out of this. If we grip the tailbone in the sacral plate and push it up when we go into a backward bend, it causes a lot of tension and only the bend in the lower back. The sacral plate has to come forward and not tucked exactly, but it needs to go forward and down, not curl under because that will put more, that will reduce the bendability of your low back. It is a really hard thing to kind of define that I'm just now getting a lot better language for. So when you have your hands on your sacral plate, push your sacral plate forward and use your hands and drag the flesh of your pants and your skin down a little bit. And you already see she leaned back slightly. The more she pushes her hands in the SI joint and down, the more she can stretch her upper body back and the lower back can bend. She's already creating a lot of range of motion. She's actually very close to more fullness of the pose. You are very close, actually. This stabi stabilizing action will, is what ultimately can help allow a lot of us with back pain reach this pose without collapsing. I've been experimenting with this in a few different poses. So if you know that this is a pose that's challenging for you or you have back pain, it is okay to have blocks on the outside of the foot tall, or even a chair behind you to grab a hold of when we try to stretch back. We're going to go into it. We're going to kind of ease into it and do it three or four times to get this sacral plate forward and down action. This will cause your glutes to, glutes to grip, but not to point them up. Onto your knees, everybody. Take the hands onto the sacral plate. Try to bring your hands as close together as you can if that's not possible. Any, any amount is good, right? You're still, we're all working in the same direction. Begin by flexing your thighs, flexing the front of the leg. The quad itself, how it attaches into the knee and push the knee down and forward. Already begin to use the legs to encourage the correct movement of the pelvis and SI joint. And then before you start throwing your shoulders back, Push your hand, especially the pinky side of the hand on the sacral plate, into the plate and then drag it down like you're trying to drag the inner crease of your glutes, your butt crack, down towards the knee as hard as you can. Then move your shoulders back, move your head back, and then lean back just four or five inches and hold. Go for hold in the active shape that is the correct alignment, then throwing yourself into the pose and then trying to, to, to make it right. Take a breath. Do not just let your head hang back, stretch your head away from your chest, stretch your chest away from your ribs, stretch your ribs away from your abdomen. Be active in all parts, especially those of us with shoulder, neck, back issues. We have to learn to extend the entire thing. Bring your body up for a second. Eagle arms, right elbow over left. Lift the elbow slightly, round the back forward. Tristan's doing a good job. She's... Take a couple breaths. Whatever fear came up, whatever stuff came up, bring yourself back into the alignment here. This is not an easy pose, but it's a wonderful pose for the back. Good, switch your arms. Round the upper back, broaden it, stretch it. Bring the body up, take the hand into the SI joint again. Press the palms forward, press the th thighs down, activate the legs. Flex the glutes and feel the glutes draw forward, not pick up. They do not want to pick up the backside of the pelvis. You want to use the glutes to stabilize with the hamstring. 
lift your head up tall. Remember, if the pelvis is the base action of the pose, the spine lifts up away from it. Stretch your head back, stretching the crown of the head back to the world. Move the shoulders back. Drag the inner crease of your glutes down with the hands to begin the bend and start to move the rest of your body back. Find a point where you can hold for an unknown amount of time, but do it from the head, the, ch uh, the upper chest, the mid body and the low back, all moving, not just letting two or three move the one. So don't keep picking your head up. Challenge your head long. Take a few breaths. Breathe nice and deep so you feel the breath. Lift the ribs higher. And as you exhale, you use that mobility to stretch toward the chest, towards the crown of the head, any degree deeper. Hands into the SI joint. Drag it down. Exhale, come on up. You were very close to home. That was really good. All right, eagle arms, right elbow over left, open up the shoulders, right? Whatever fear comes up, you know, back bends are kind of scary. You don't get to see where you're falling to. So it's okay to kind of stretch, open the back, protect your neck. Those of you that worry about your neck, this is a good way after a backward bend to, to free it. Switch your arms. Undo the arms, hands on the SI joint. Here we go. So this is the time where we're gonna take the hands off the SI joint after you bend to whatever degree, then you can reach for the blocks. But when you reach for the blocks, it's not about taking one than the other. Try to keep the stability and keep the legs, the core, the back, all of it working. And then the arms can float into the next part of the pose, which is pushing through the feet to lift the, the upper back higher. You'll see. Hands on the SI joint, thighs push down, right? They're the root action of the pose. Press the palm into the SI joint. Let it move forward. Use the hands, drag it down. Stretch your spine up away from the traction of the SI joint. Move the head back first. Not just tilting the chin, but actively stretch the neck back. Move the shoulders back. Move the chest away from the ribs. Move the ribs away from the belly. Move your belly away from your pelvis. And then work the SI even more. Forward and down. Wonderful, everybody. And then as best you can, try to hold it, but then reach for anything. Stretch your arms back and see if you can hold the legs, the SI, and the extension with any part that you can. So you start to teach stability. And if you can't, if your hands you know, find nothing, it's okay just to work this pose from that position until you learned the extension one day. Nice, take a breath. If your hands are floating or on something, your feet are the blocks, put them back on your sacral plate, pick yourself back up. Nice. Downward dog, Adho Mukha Sanasana. That extension from the sacral plate descending to the upper spine lifting is going to give a lot of relief. It can be good in pigeon pose, wheel pose, any, any backward bend. Now, there's no backward bend that I know of where the tailbone lifts. So downward dog, take the downward dog for a moment, breathe into it, lift your core up a little bit so you're not pushing your head, neck, shoulders down and go to your sacral, feel your sacral plate again. If you've ever been in some of the classes where myself or the other teachers will put our hand on your sacral plate and push. We'll push on your sacral plate to open it. So 
Sorry about the bell. Stretch your heels down, but let the sacral plate move first towards the buttock. Exhale, come on down. Lay on your back. Grab your strap. Hook the strap around your right foot, stretch your right leg up into the air. Point the foot, flex the toes, bend the elbows. See the difference in the mobility of your leg. Disengage the glute, move the thigh muscle to create the action in the leg. Take your right leg across to the left about five to 10 inches. Bring the leg up, switch your legs. Point the foot, pull the toes back. Lower the leg so you can lengthen the leg. You can take the tension and grip off the back side of the leg. Make the front side of the leg, the quad, do the greater work and then pull on a little. Move the leg across to the right about five inches. Bring the leg up, let the leg go, let the eyes close. Set your strap to the side, enjoy Svasana for a few minutes. As your eyes close, again, just like any moment of rest in between a pose, we check in. What was created for you here? Out of the 1,200 poses and the 1.2 million variations, there's infinite different ways to teach and look at these things. But they only really work if you apply them to you. And each application, there's no way each application is going to be a miracle worker, is going to be an insecure. Some may make your breath open, but your body ache. Some may make you happy your body happy, but your breath is short. We go through poses that might seem simple or basic and learn different ways to do them. So all our poses work with all layers of ourself. We discover and create balance in those three points so that we do not have to sacrifice for our health. We do not punish one part of ourself to heal the others. That creates a 
continuous chain of suffering. So if you found part of the sequence tonight or part of a pose or a technique that worked for you, hold on to it. Recreate it, experiment with it, explore it. Because you're not a lesser student because all parts did not work for you. Good students take what they need, apply it so they can continue to do them in the world. Yoga is not here to judge you or punish you for not being capable. It's here to give you a chance to see how capable you are. So rest my friends for the remainder of our time and enjoy the fruits of your yogic practice.